Good morning. <laughs> it's great to see all of you here this morning uh, on this uh, holiday weekend. Great to have those of you online that have joined us. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to worship together no matter where we are. And uh, would just uh, like to welcome all of you. Uh, if you're a guest with us, we are uh, uh, super glad to have you uh, with us this morning. Uh, if you would, uh, everyone check out your bulletin for all that's happening. Uh, fill out the, the connection card that you can find in your bulletin and you can drop that and any offering you have in the box on your way out this morning. Um, I do want to uh, call attention to a, to a couple of things. <clears throat> uh, first of all, um, it's in your bulletin, but uh, uh, we have started a, a uh, prayer time on Thursdays at 6.30. I uh, mentioned it last week, but uh, uh, th there's no greater thing that we could do right now in this time of transition than, uh, than uh, to pray. Um, we'll, we'll get together and pray for, for the church, for our community, uh, and for, for everything that's happening that, that needs prayer. Uh, so, so please join us if you feel led to do that. Uh, and uh, we'll meeting over in the A Wing, A22. Uh, so uh, we'd love to have you for that. Um, <clears throat> and then one that's not in the bulletin, if you uh, got the E News this week, um, I talked about it, but uh, many of you have been asking uh, over the last uh, couple months, uh, uh, can we donate for the, the Ukraine situation? And, um, and you can still donate to, to UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief, uh, and that's been our, what, what we've uh, pointed everyone to. Um, the, the thing is, all that money does go to, to relief efforts. It, it, uh, but, but UMCOR reserves the right to use it for whatever they need it the most for. Um, so, so you couldn't give specifically for Ukraine. Uh, so I have a, um, uh, and we, we, have, we have people that have Ukrainian ties here. Uh, um, Leon's got, uh, got uh, uh, well, came from Ukraine and, and still has family there. My, I have a neighbor that, uh, that <clears throat> is uh, Ukrainian and uh, has a niece, uh, well, has several family members, but, but uh, a niece from Mariupol that uh, um, has been affected by it. And I, we got the pictures too. Um, <clears throat> so this is her niece's house and her niece and seven, her seven children um, were on the left where that little arrow you can see and, and if you, uh, can, Leah, can you read Russian? Anyway, the, what, what that says, if you could, is, is that, that that's where they were hiding when a missile hit their house. Um, they, they, no, none of them were injured. Uh, they, were all, they were all safe. Um, uh, and that's a view from inside the house. And uh, so, so their church now is, is feeding hundreds of people still to this day. Um, uh, every day, uh, the, the pastor at the church has seven children also, and they're all helping. These are some of his kids. Uh, there's a lot for the food, uh, or more of them serving. They're cooking most of the food just outside on sidewalks. Um, and then interestingly enough, this, this was a church, this is not the church that's doing this, but, but this is the church that, that my neighbor uh, said where she accepted Christ. Um, and it's all burned out. That's just the metal frames of the chairs left. Um, and then back at the other church, uh, they're, they're also uh, housing people. Um, and so if you, if you feel the desire to, to give to support uh, their efforts in, in feeding the folks and, and helping with whatever needs uh, they have, uh, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you write a check, just put Ukraine on the bottom uh, or put it in an envelope and, and mark Ukraine. Or if you do it electronically, uh, you can uh, fill in the other section with Ukraine. Uh, but but uh, they are they are uh, 
uh, uh, it's interesting to, 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 to talk to my neighbor and to see just how much uh, Christianity is, is thriving in the Ukraine. And uh, this is a, a good example of that. So, um, so if you feel led to give, uh, that is, that's great. And we'll get that money to them. Um, otherwise, this is the day that the Lord has made, and it's a beautiful one. Um, it's a day where we honor those who have lost their lives in, in service to, uh, to our country. Um, uh, if, you, uh, if you served in the armed forces, would you stand up right now? We'd like to honor those that are still with us. <clears throat> And I'll be talking a little bit more about, about Memorial Day uh, uh, later, but uh, uh, let us worship now together. Good morning. Good morning. As we begin worship, let these words help center us today. Wait to be clothed with power from on high. The one who ascended will come to us again, bringing new life and new hope. Wait. Please stand as you are able <clears throat> and join me in our call to worship. We come together this day, drawn by the light of God's love. In God's eternal kingdom, darkness and despair are vanquished. In God's eternal realm, peace and hope reign. Let all the people praise God with their music and their voices. Let all the people praise God with their deeds of loving kindness. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us continue to worship together by singing our opening hymn, America the Beautiful.
please join me as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and in the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of lords, illumine our hearts this day that we may feel your glory and live into the hope to which you have called us. O oh God, on the day of your ascension, you drew Jesus to your side, promising his companions spirit, power, mission, and purpose, calling his disciples to trust the future that they could not yet see. As we look to Jesus this day, give us the same hope of spirit, power, mission, and purpose, and call us to trust in a future that we too are yet unable to see. Guide us into your depths that we may glimpse the spirit already at work in our lives, revealing your truth and empowering us to bear witness to the risen Christ. We pray this in the name of Jesus, your mystery, your wisdom, your glory. O oh Lord, we have not always lived our lives as kingdom people. We place our crowns on hopelessness, fear, and selfishness. We are ruled by our schedules and our need for control. We make kings out of the things that we acquire and queens of our immediate desires. We forget that your kingdom draws near to us on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, we pray. Come, Lord, and open in us the gates to your kingdom. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we pray for those who have courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. May the examples of their sacrifice inspire in us the selfless love of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the families of our fallen troops and fill their homes and their lives with your strength and peace. In union with people of goodwill of every nation, embolden us to answer the call to work for peace and justice and thus seek an end to violence and conflict around the globe. We continue to pray for all those in need in our church family. Let us lift up St. Joseph in this time of transition. Lead us to what you would have us do in this time, in this place. We lift all these things up to you in your name as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Thank you all for the beautiful music. So, memory is an interesting thing. So I, I used to have a steel trap up here. <laughs> I could remember anything I heard. Um, but but uh, memory is also a, a funny thing. Most people are, are prone to forget. Forgetting is kind of the norm and, and, and it gets worse as you get older. Anybody vouch for that? <laughs> so, um, I, I, you may have heard this story before, but, but I remember taking uh, uh, the Dale Carnegie course when I was working for a bank uh, before I became a pastor. Uh, anybody familiar with Dale Carnegie course? Several of you. Uh, it's a course that, that, that uh, um, uh, well, for, for us, it was meant to, to make us better salespeople. Um, and, and it did all kinds of things of how to build relationships. And, and one of the things that they taught us was a, a method to remember things. Um, and mostly, you know, to help us to remember names as we were meeting people. And, and uh, so the, the, the process was, uh, was, was word association, and they had, uh, if it was a list of things you needed to remember, a, a, a way to stack them on top of each other so that you remembered everything. And, and uh, um, I, did, I didn't really care for their method. <laughs> and I, I didn't really need it at the time. Um, <clears throat> so we did a little exercise after they taught the method, and, and there were about 35 of us in the class, um, and I knew a couple of them before taking the class, but uh, um, we were in a circle, and we had to, had to go around the circle, and we, there were three things that we had to tell about ourselves. Our name, uh, there was something to do with an animal, and then I don't remember what the third thing was. <laughs> But it was something, something personal about us. <clears throat> and so after everybody had gone around with those three things, then, uh, then each person, or, or I, I don't think we went around the circle, it was just a volunteer, but had, had to try to go around the circle and name all three things about all the people in the circle. And a few people went, three or four, and then I volunteered, and I was the first one and, and one of the only ones to be able to do all 35 with all three facts correct. And um, uh, I wish that I had paid more attention to the method they use now. <laughs> because it doesn't work the same way now. I mean, I have, I have a problem meeting somebody and two minutes into the conversation thinking, now what was their name? <laughs> Just doesn't work, doesn't work the same. It's not, not like it used to be. Um, so remembering, if we, look at, if we look at the Bible, we can tell that God values remembering. Remember, remembrance, memorial, those words are found over 200 times in the Bible. Uh, there are all kinds of, of days in the Old Testament that, uh, that, were, uh, that God marks as days of remembrance. Uh, the most important being the Jewish Passover, still celebrated year after year, which is all about remembering how God delivered his people out of the hands of the Egyptians. The one that we can readily recall from the New Testament is when Jesus ordains what we call communion today as a way to remember what he did at his final Passover meal and what he did on the cross when he died for us. These are some of the things that prompt us, that prompt us to remember and we have several of those that happen throughout 
our, our time in church, throughout our, our living, just with, with holidays, and another contemporary example is happening this weekend, because we're observing Memorial Day tomorrow. Memorial Day is a holiday that was declared uh, just in 1971. As a day to remember those men and women who fought for our freedom and lost their lives while doing so. But this, this weekend comes every year, and, and do we really have that as our main focus on this holiday weekend? Or do we just see it as a a three-day weekend, we get a day off. Or as, a, as a, a, a great time to go to the lake. If any of you are watching from the lake, hey. <laughs> <laughs> or in Indiana, the big thing is the Indy 500. Is that what this weekend is all about? Or maybe it's just the, the, the cookout, the barbecue that you'll have with family and friends. So today I want to talk about remembering. And first of all, we do need, we need to remember those who fought and died for our freedom, that laid down our lives for us. John 15, 3 records Jesus' powerful words when he said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. More than, or almost 1.3 million Americans have laid down their lives in our wars. They paid the ultimate price defending this great country that we live in. And because of their sacrifice, we're free to do many things that others around the world don't have the privilege of doing. We can worship freely in America. We can pray freely. We have freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and we're free to vote because of what they did. So we have to remember these people. We can't let our party plans for this weekend divert our attention to the real reason that we have this holiday. And then probably because of the freedoms that we have, we usually take most things for granted. And we tend to also forget the millions of Christians who have died over the years standing up for their faith. Not to mention those who, who have suffered and almost died because of their faith. There are about 43 million Christians who have died because of their faith since the time of Jesus. And that's 21 centuries worth of people dying. What's what got me is I, I saw that more than half of those that have died because of their faith have happened in the last century. Still to this day, churches, churches in some countries are burned. Pastors are murdered. Christians are persecuted and killed. In many countries, it's illegal to be a Christian. But what's really interesting is that in those places where Christians are most persecuted, that's where Christianity is growing the fastest. We need to remember and pray for those who are being persecuted for their faith. And then today, what we need to remember most of all is, is Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one who died to save us. And we're reminded what Jesus did for us when we received communion. With these words from 1 Corinthians 11 or some similar 
words. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. But even, even going through that experience, uh, we, we have communion monthly here. Even, even doing that, some Christians don't truly take those words to heart. They go through the motions and they love they love participating and receiving, participating in and receiving Holy Communion, but, but for a lot of people, it, it, it's just snack time during worship. And even some who cherish those words and, 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 and uh, their observation don't think about it until the next time we celebrate Communion. It's interesting how we can forget, or at least put it into the back of our minds, the greatest gift that's ever been given. We're reminded of this gift when we hear the words of, of probably the most famous scripture in the Bible, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life and he continues in verse 17 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him God's saving grace is offered to us because of his love for us and in return he wants us to do as Jesus instructed in Matthew 22 verses 36 through 39 when he when he was asked teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. God loves us gave us an incredible gift, Jesus Christ dying on a cross, paying for our sins. What a marvelous sacrifice. And he asked us in return to love him and to love each other as much as we love ourselves, and that's hard to do sometimes for some of us. Thinking about all this <clears throat> brought to mind uh, a classic Christmas story that, that you may or may not have heard. It's part of a, it's a short story in a, in a, a work of, of stories and poems called The Way of the Wolf. And the, the story is Barrington Bunny. Barrington is this bunny who doesn't think he's worth a whole lot. Uh, thinks that he has no family and, and uh, uh, he, he is, is wallowing in all that pity one day and the silver wolf appears on the horizon and the silver wolf uh, is, is God. <clears throat> the silver wolf encourages him by telling him that, that bunnies have a purpose. He said, bunnies are furry and warm. And also, all the animals in the forest are your family. He said, one day, one day you'll, you'll understand your worth. And so one, on this uh, cold, snowy Christmas Eve, Barrington, uh, after, after doing some things, runs into a, a baby field mouse that's been uh, separated from his family. Um, he's lost and all alone, and, and uh, the, the field mouse says that he surely will die overnight because the weather's getting worse. It's, it's cold, and it, he, there's no way that 
that he could survive the night. But Barrington assures the mouse that, that he will take care of him because bunnies are furry and warm. And so he lays on the, the mouse and, and the mouse is suddenly warm and falls asleep. Barrington then understands and he thinks, oh, bunnies are furry and warm. And when he feels the heartbeat of the mouse, underneath him thinks and all the animals in the forest are my family so he kept the mouse warm and cozy and the next morning the mouse's family finds the little baby mouse alive and well underneath the carcass of a dead bunny He gave his life to save another. Billy Graham delivered a, a memorial address to the veterans of foreign wars and in 1955, many years before we even had a Memorial Day. Um, but, but even that long ago, 1955, it's amazing how true his words still are today. So listen to what he said. <clears throat> the freedoms we enjoy, the freedoms we take so much for granted, the freedoms so often trifled with, we trifle with, were brought not, bought not by the gold of our millionaires, nor altogether the genius of our scientists, nor the sacrifices of the people at home, but primarily by the blood, sweat, and agony of those whose names on this day we honor, those who died that we might live. They found, as have brave men of all ages, that there are principles well worth dying for. Their noble, unselfish sacrifice is a silent, eloquent rebuke to the self-centeredness of this generation. Let those who want peace at any price remember this day that thousands have died for honor and freedom and that what we have today has come at the price of shed blood. Even though the sacrifices of our war dead have been great, yet the greatest sacrifice of all time was made by a man on a cross who died not only physically but spiritually that we might live. We have neglected him too long. We have rejected his plan for peace, and as a result, we have fought, bled, and died for centuries. I challenge the world at this hour to accept his program of heart regeneration that can transform the society in which we live, and we can know the meaning of genuine peace in our time. Yes, the bells of liberty ring in America today because these men we honor today got through for us. The sacred memory of their sacrifice will always live in our hearts, and we have a sacred and holy trust, and we cannot fail them. My mind goes back 2,000 years to another battle which was fought on a hill called Calvary. It was a battle of one young man against all the forces of evil. It seemed like a futile, hopeless struggle as Jesus Christ took on Satan's task force, single-handed. The jeers of the rabble, the spittle of the soldiers, and the sneering of the people were incidental compared to the inner struggle <clears throat> which was taking place in his soul. But I watch him in fancy as one hand is stretched out toward God and the other toward rebellious man. And he makes the connection and says, it is finished. He got through for us. <clears throat> if we are to be strong spiritually, it will be through him. Thousands today are finding a fresh new meaning of life through him. They are learning to say with confidence, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. We can best keep faith 
with those who have gone before us by keeping faith with ourselves, with our highest ideals, and with God. Words that still have a lot of meaning today. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, tomorrow we, we will pause to remember the brave men and women of the armed services who gave their lives for our freedom. Oh God, we are thankful for them. Their sacrifice means that we can live in freedom and worship you in peace. We honor them and their, pray, their bravery now. And we acknowledge that, that they were so much more than just soldiers. They were fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, friends. <clears throat> they fought not for glory, not for wealth, not for honor, but for freedom. We live today with that freedom. But more importantly, we thank you for the freedom we have in you, for the sacrifice you paid by dying on the cross so that our sins would be forgiven and so that we would have the opportunity to live with you in heaven for eternity by accepting you as our Savior. We pray that our freedoms would compel us to share you with others who don't know you. Lord, we pray all this in your holy name. Amen. You'd stand as you're able now and let's sing our hymn of sending, God of the Ages. Let's go from this place and remember, don't forget. Remember the freedoms that we have were paid with a, 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 a
price that a lot of us are not willing to, to pay. So let us remember, let us have peace, let us cast our eyes upon Jesus who paid the ultimate price for us. So go in peace in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week.